All right, I'm on day three with no sleep. I'm tired, but everything just keeps rolling through my head. All of these places that I was at, all of these people who made empty promises. I've been dog sitting for about three days. Now I have access to coffee, but and I know it'll put me to sleep, but it's just, oh, I just can't do it. That's not really sleep, you know? But, um, this video here is about Ted Bollinger. And why it is that I was so afraid for my loved ones but not for myself. See, I, I wanted my life to end. I still do. There's nothing worse for somebody who's been sexually abused than to be accused of those things. <clears throat> now, here's the thing about Ted Bollinger. Natalie sent that email in 2016. Now, you guys watching Sword and Scale, yeah, Mike Boudet, he uses words to cast doubt because he already had a set bias, and you idiots play along because you're fucking stupid. You're addicted to drama. You don't give a fuck about the truth. That's because you're fucking stupid. And I don't mind telling you you're stupid because you're fucking stupid. All right, now that we got that out of the way. Natalie sent that email in 2016 about her dad. And in it, he talks about, she talks about how her dad tried to beat Shelly to death. She also talks about her, how her mom is addicted to abusive men. How her mother chose abusive men over her own children. And how they were scared. So, Ted, I've already heard stories about him from Natalie. Not Alicia, just Natalie. And, uh, it's a pretty fucked up scenario. So, she kind of grew up in a similar situation to me. Ted also was a drug dealer. He had her selling drugs. He was also sexually abusing his daughters. Now, I didn't want to expose Ted. I mean, as far as Ted and Alicia and Natalie were all concerned, you know, that was their own family business. And Natalie making it my business by telling me about it, well, should I have turned him in then? Because she was an adult by then, and he'd already gone to prison for child abuse, but he didn't go to prison for the specific abuse of being too friendly, as she put it in that email. So this guy is definitely a scary person. He's also known to carry firearms. And and it's not a good situation. So when I was being assaulted and having my life threatened for going to Boulder to see my loved ones, you know, it, it was really bugging me. I was begging Natalie and Alicia and Maddie to put a stop to it and letting them know what's going on, and I, I literally begged them to kill me. And they just weren't getting it. They weren't understanding that I'm literally having my life threatened and being assaulted. And, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time before they block me, so I, I have to try to state it as quickly as possible. And so I just explained it as a blunt statement. I'm being treated like a fucking child molester. 
I'm being treated like a rapist. I mean, really, for a guy, they know what that means. For a woman, it doesn't even occur to them that that includes people not being able to see their loved ones, and it includes being assaulted and having their life threatened. So, when I exposed Ted, you know, I, I was sick of it. I really was. I was sick of being treated like a child molester. I was sick of not being able to go see my friends for more than maybe a few hours, and then they got to go, and then I have to leave because, really, I, I'm not going to fucking fight with a meth head. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in violence, and that's why I continually left. Now, what's all this got to do with Ted? Well, I knew what Ted did. I still had that email. Now, I wasn't stalking Natalie. I was trying to get an end to the violence. And if you want to accuse me of stalking Natalie, you got to accuse me of stalking Pierre. You got to accuse me of stalking Alicia. You got to accuse me of stalking Maddie. And if you look at the messages between us, it's pretty fucking obvious that I wasn't stalking them. It's pretty obvious that I'm letting them know straight up that I'm being treated like a fucking child molester. And they need to fucking come forward. But they didn't care. I got a hold of Natalie's mother on the 9th of December of 26, or 2017 to let her know what was going on. She didn't answer. The next day, I, uh, well, I had some pretty major issues. I really needed something to happen. Jeff Ritter was calling me every Tuesday, and he was supposed to be helping me get a lawyer. And he said that I needed paperwork before I could get the lawyer through the Colorado Coalition of the Homeless. So... I basically just had to take the abuse no matter what. I was desperate. So even though I'd held off for months and months about exposing Tim and Ted, it wasn't until December that I was like, you know what, fuck all of this. Fuck all of it. I am a good fucking person and I don't deserve this shit. I didn't do anything of the sort to those young ladies, and they need to come forward and tell the fucking truth. So when I exposed Ted Bollinger, I exposed him on his Facebook with Natalie's email. Now later on, I found out, according to Denise M. Kelly, in one of her posts, that... Ted Bollinger and Shelley Campbell were trying to have Elise, or have Natalie put in prison. Had I known that, I wouldn't have been trying to help Shelley. I'd have known that she was up to no good. But getting back to exposing Ted. I exposed him on the 10th, or on the 12th of December, 2017, on his own Facebook. The next morning, I got a call from Natalie. That would be the 13th. And she said to me that uh, I fucked up things way worse with her family. See, Natalie, when we were texting on the Michelle Brannick post, she said that she's not scared of me. She's pissed off at me. Well, I don't give a fuck. I'm pissed off, too. I'm the one getting treated like a fucking child molester. And it's fucked up because she was an adult when we started hanging out. We never hung out before she was 18. Never. Not even once. The closest that we had to hanging out is her hanging out with a group that was close to where I'm sitting. And the time that I drew that dragon on her, that's not hanging out. That was making money for Cat. So 
So Ted Bollinger, being the piece of shit that he is, well, on the uh, 16th, <clears throat> or on the 15th, Natalie got a hold of me. She wanted to meet up to stop all the crazy. And I was so fucking grateful. I mean, I, I could barely walk. But I put down that cane and I picked up my backpack and it had my computer in it because I didn't know how to take screenshots. So I was taking the whole computer to go show her. And I got a hold of Chelsea Worsing to see if she could meet me there so that I could feel safe. And I even stopped on the way there at a Starbucks to, in, in Denver, right off of 44th, to make a video. And I spent almost the last of my money on the Starbucks card that I had. I had just enough to get on the bus to go from 44th up to, or 40th, I think, up to 94th, somewhere around there. And I went to Miss Peaches. She was the one who was giving me a ride because she worked in Boulder and she lived in Aurora. And she gave me a ride there. And it turned out it wasn't Natalie. It was a protection order. So I put that protection order in my backpack and it stayed in my backpack until I found out Natalie was missing. Because before then, there was no reason for me to look at it. Jeff Ritter was going on vacation I didn't have a lawyer. I didn't know how to take screenshots. Natalie didn't show up. Officer uh, Michael West, I believe was his name, wouldn't take my police report. He didn't fucking care. And that's the thing, is that we could have done this as adults, but she wanted to go playing sly. She didn't want the fact that she was on heroin being brought up to the police. That's the only reason that she did it the way that she did it. Because she was not afraid of me. She was not afraid of me hurting her. She was afraid of me telling the truth. And she was scared shitless of that. So, I was pretty fucking pissed off. I mean, that's basically telling me, all right, I literally cannot go see my loved ones because she's not going to ask these meth heads to stop. She's not going to do a goddamn thing to stop it. And I, I literally need an actual lawyer. And at this point, I didn't know how protection orders worked. I just assumed that it was permanent. I also assumed that she was still in Virginia because she didn't show up. I mean, I had assumed she was in Virginia the whole time until she blindsided me with, hey, I want to meet you at Starbucks. And then when it was a protection order, I was like, well, fuck, she's still in Virginia. Fucking, I've been trying to make a report for almost a year, and she was able to do it, and I'm not. I even told her to give the officers my phone number and have them call me. <coughs> she didn't even try that. She didn't want me talking to the police about her because she was on heroin, obviously. So then, when I uh, was assaulted at Ken and Leah's, I was verbally assaulted by Ken and Leah, and I was physically assaulted by Don Bird. <laughs> so now I needed a lawyer to go after Ken and Leah. On the 26th, that's the day that I was assaulted by Ken and Leah, the 26th of December, I grabbed my backpack and I grabbed that engine that I had, the one that I took pictures of in Virginia, for those of you who have seen it. And I went to Miss Peach's house. And that was the last time I saw that engine, believe it or not. So, two days later, I'm, I'm waiting on Miss Peach's to have the time and she's gotta have surgery and she had her surgery and then we were gonna sit down and work on it after we had dinner. 
So I pulled out the pan to start up dinner and my phone rang and it was a police officer. From a general number telling me that Natalie Bollinger was missing, I hit the floor like a fucking ton of bricks. And all I could do was tell the officer to go find her. And I made a video about her missing. This is the third person who I made a missing persons video about. The first one was uh, Shauna Sinclair. Her daughter was stolen by her ex. And the second one was Mandy Hughes. Her son was missing in Longmont. And the last person that he was seen with was my friend Ogre, who's not my friend anymore because he's a jackass. And Natalie's mom, who could have done something, but she didn't because she is a terrible judge of character. Well, she gets on my Facebook and she's slandering the fuck out of me. Meanwhile, I'm scared shitless that either Ted Bollinger or Tim Beeson harmed Natalie. At this point, I don't know if she's dead. I don't know if she's alive. But I know to be scared shitless of what Ted is capable of. If the man is capable of raping his own daughter, he's capable of getting drunk and beating his own daughter, and he's willing to force his extremely underage daughters to sell drugs. They were selling drugs for him at the age of 14. Now, by the time she disappeared, she was 19. And because of Ted's history, I was scared shitless of what he might do to his own family. Also scared of what him and his buddies might do to mine. I'd already had my life threatened and my family's lives threatened by Tim Beeson at this point. I just needed Natalie to call off the fucking dogs. She knew I didn't rape anybody. Maddie knew I didn't rape anybody. Alicia knew I didn't rape anybody. Is it that goddamn difficult to say, hey, Sean didn't rape anybody, so leave him the fuck alone. I had a fucking panic attack in Virginia while severely fucking dehydrated and separated from my entire support network. Yeah, I don't do well in that kind of environment. Meanwhile, I'm out of gas, and I'm completely screwed. I have no money to get anywhere. <clears throat> that was my Virginia trip, being fucking stranded in Virginia with a fucked up phone, a fucked up car, a fucked up back, no money. Like, yeah, I'm not having a good fucking time at that point. But we'll get back to when Natalie disappeared. I've got, instead of dozens of people who are after me, there's literally hundreds of people just in Boulder who want to kick my ass because they think I did shit that I fucking didn't. Because Alicia is running around Boulder, Colorado with Dalton Crawford talking shit, accusing me of shit that I didn't fucking do. Wanting to know where her sister is. Where's Sean? Where's Sean? Where's Sean? Meanwhile, I'm doing my best to try to find her, too. I offered every penny that I had to try to get her somewhere safe. So let's fast forward a bit. When I found out that Natalie was dead, I asked people to leave the Bollingers alone. They never did any such thing for me. They never did. They should have asked people to leave me alone in November of 2016 when they were made aware of the situation. But no, it's over a year later, and I've got now thousands of people fucking looking at my Facebook and people threatening my life and then people offering me help sporadically through there. People who later on treated me completely like shit because I didn't see their stuff because going through all of those fucking threats was fucking freaking me out. 
Now, Ted Bollinger, we're not talking about some dude who's just trying to let off some steam. We're talking about a man who is willing to rape his own daughters, who tried to beat his ex-wives to death. The police needed to fucking do something about him. And they needed to do something about Tim Beeson, too. So then let's fast forward a little bit more. Let's go to after I was assaulted by the border police and released and picked up by Candace. While I was at Candace's, myself and Miss Shelley were in contact. I was doing my best to get her all of the information that she needed so that she could take a look for herself. She didn't fucking care. She was just playing head games. That's obvious now. She was trying to cover her own ass. She was trying to cover the fact that her and Ted were trying to get Natalie put in prison. So, I get a, a phone call the day after. My wrist is extremely screwed up, but I'm doing my best to write with it. And I'm trying to get as much information as I can to Danica and Shelly. And that pocket dial, Danica and Shelly at this point had both let me know how deathly afraid of Ted Bollinger that they were. And I already knew a bit about his history from Natalie. And also from Alicia from the phone call that we had made on the way to the pier in Norfolk where the pagoda is. So, when I hear that pocket dial, and it sounds like people are fighting, like there's a scuffle, yeah, I'm scared shitless, and I called 911. And Officer Michael Beard showed up, and he didn't take the situation seriously. Miss Shelley could have been beaten, being beaten to death right at that very moment. The way that that officer reacted should have let me know immediately that something was up. So, I'm scared shitless for Miss Shelley, and she's scared shitless, and the way that the police officer reacted to the situation, yeah, it's pretty obvious that if Ted Bollinger wanted to kill Miss Shelley, they'd let him. They would fucking let him. So I got a hold of Rayanna Ingersoll to try to, well, to try to get Miss Shelley and her kids somewhere safe. I didn't know that Rayanna was an alcoholic at that point. I just knew that her husband got a hold of me, asked me to not talk to her because she was crying. And at that point, you know, I understood it. It's a fucking scary situation. This is Ted Bollinger. So, uh... We'll fast forward a bit. Let's go to, uh... Him harassing me on several occasions. Once at my grandma's funeral. Just the night before my grandma's funeral. He's on Alicia's account. Alicia has my phone number. She's had my phone number for a while. She called me for Miss Shelley's number on December 29th of 2017. I gave her my phone number on the Michelle Brannick thing. I gave it to her, I gave it to Maddie Boa, and I gave it to Natalie so that one of them, please, just one of you, call me and fucking listen to me and put a fucking end to it. You being afraid is different from me threatening your family, you fucking idiots. So for seven hours, Ted is giving me no indication that Alicia is okay. He's asking for my phone number. He wants me to put it out there publicly on YouTube video. Not gonna happen, bud. I was trying to figure out how to use the YouTube Messenger at that point so that I could message it to him possibly that way. 
But I needed to know that Alicia was okay, and he gave no indication of that. So I called 911. And the officer who showed up did not do his fucking job for shit. And that's actually more Graham's fault than that officer's fault. I mean, sure, the officer is an idiot, but Graham is an even bigger idiot. And when that officer asked him if it was just one of those things where I needed someone to talk to, Graham should have said, no, this is a legit situation. But Graham, he was supposed to find out about the situation, and he hadn't. He hadn't made any effort to do that. There was a few times where he was going to, but Joshua Eichelberger, the alcoholic at Tabby's house, this is Tabitha Michelle Cook, every time that Graham is going to help me, Josh needs attention. He's an alcoholic, so he has to have Graham right that moment. So uh, an actual police report should have been made. Now, this officer who was supposed to make that report, I had interacted with on three previous occasions. Once, when they took me to the hospital in Scotts Bluff for being, or in uh, Sydney for being suicidal. And twice more when he told me that he has real police work to do and I need to just man up. So, uh, yeah, at this point, I am, I'm scared, not for myself, I want to die, I'm scared for Alicia Bollinger, and she finally did get back a hold of us to say that she was alright, but I needed the officer to hear her voice, it turned out that he lied outright about hearing her voice, it went to dispatch, and then dispatch talked to him, but at least Alicia was not being harmed, so, then, later on, he decided he was going to do that a few more times. Like, after uh, I was pretending he served a protection order while in the Longmont Hospital after being assaulted, well, that's when Ted decided that he was going to threaten me and goat me. And, uh... Well, Natalie's grandmother did the same thing. She got on several of my posts to make rude and inconsiderate comments to try to goat me. And I'll tell you what, it worked. I'm going to defend myself. I am going to defend myself. And that's just how it's going to be. Everyone should have the right to defend themselves. And I have been prevented from that right for a while. Now we're going to get to the fun part here. So Ted Bollinger gets busted with methamphetamines and a loaded firearm. Well, actually, let's, let's first go to uh, the court date with Joseph Michael Lopez, where I was going in there to file a report against the police as well as against the Bollingers. Ted throws a tantrum in the courtroom like a fucking five-year-old. He's calling me a child molester and saying that his daughter was just a little girl. She was just a teenager. Bitch, she was a grown-ass adult, motherfucker. You're just trying to paint me as the bad guy so that you can get away with the shit that you did. You're a piece of shit, Ted Bollinger. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, the officers were very hostile towards me after that. And I was on my best behavior, despite the fact that I was shaking like a leaf because of the way that the officers were treating me. The officers, not Ted. Ted hid behind those officers like a fucking coward. So then, and, and we're talking about in person, he's hiding behind his whole family and six officers. That's how fucking scared of me Ted was. He's the internet warrior. What a fucking pussy. Anyway, so he gets busted with methamphetamines and a loaded firearm. And then he goes to another county and gets busted with meth again. 
Yeah, he's got a loaded fucking firearm. Of course I'm afraid of him harming my friends or family. So then, while well, I'm in Virginia and getting on a bus on the 18th of October, that's my birthday by the way, and I'm getting on a bus to leave Virginia, and I finally show up on the 20th in Rapid City, South Dakota to see Jamie and the boy, and as soon as I'm getting ready to get off the bus, I get a message from Bobby, Bobby Forrest, that Alicia is missing. This is the second time that Alicia has gone missing, and I've made a video about it, because she disappeared a few months before, and they did find her, thank goodness. She got busted for drugs. So I find out that she was on a high-speed chase through... Oklahoma and Kansas, and it finally ended in Wichita. She was with her dad. There were drugs involved. There was also marijuana and marijuana paraphernalia, which is actually against the law in Kansas. Internal possession is against the law in Kansas. So, Alicia should have been taken to jail with her dad. But, she's a pretty girl, so just her dad went to jail. He should have never had access to her. Ted Bollinger should have been in prison before they turned 18, and he should still be there now. He should have never been allowed access to his kids ever again. If a man is willing to have his children sell drugs, and he's willing to beat them and rape them, yeah, he shouldn't have access to his kids, biological or not. So, just like when Natalie was missing, people are harassing me, where she's at, what'd you do to her, and so on and so forth. And, uh, yeah, Candace is right to be afraid of her kids, but she's afraid of the police more so than Ted Bollinger. The fact is, while I have not owned a firearm in well over a decade, probably close to 15 years. Ted's not legally allowed to have one, and he's definitely got one. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of Ted Bollinger being free. Ted Bollinger is a monster. And he's not the only one. Mike Boudet is a monster, too. And so is his friend, Josh. These guys tried to make Ted out to be the good guy and tried to make me out to be the villain. And because of that slander, they pretend like it's true. And by preventing me from going to court, I have to deal with the consequences of that slander, just like I had to deal with the consequences of Alicia's slander, Maddie Boa's slander, and Natalie Bollinger's slander. As well as, ding, 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 you guessed it, Rose M. Kelly's slander. I should have been allowed to show that in court. Fuck the police. Fuck Ted Bollinger. And Alicia Bollinger, it doesn't matter how much I love you, you do not deserve the right to be free after what you did to me, after what you did to your sister, after what you put your family through. You don't deserve to be free. You protected the predators. Just like Jamie Curtis. Just like Amy Witcher. And they're not the only ones.